Welcome. As we gather together as a community and talk about the issues facing Central Florida and Orange County, I'm Pat McGuffin, your host today, and we're so glad to have you with us at Joy in Our Town. With us today, we have Kelly Deutsch, who is going to talk about one of the key things that we have been looking for uh, greater understanding in our community, and that is talking a little bit about mosquito control uh, with our health services department in Orange County. So, uh, Kelly, we welcome you with us. Tell us a little bit about your background and why you're here. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I've been in mosquito control for more than 15 years. I can't even believe that it's been that long, but I started my mosquito control career back in Minnesota. That's where I'm from. I have a science degree and uh, worked there for, for a long time and really got a good background in mosquito control. And um, I've been in Florida since 2007 and, uh, you know, there's a lot lots of mosquitoes here and uh, I'm glad I can be a part of it. Yes, yes. Well, you know, when you say you started your mosquito control in Minnesota, we tend to think, at least here in Florida, the cold weather mm. comes, knocks down the mosquitoes. Right. Are there mosquitoes in Minnesota? There's lots of mosquitoes. In fact, they have the largest mosquito control district in the country. Um, they're, they're pretty aggressive up there and so it's good to have mosquito control. Wow, wow. We, we don't tend to think about that right. because uh, here in uh, uh, wonderful sunny Florida. Right. We know we have mosquitoes and we're in that that season. Yeah. So what is actually um, uh, You didn't say mosquito elimination. You said mosquito control. Mm -hmm. What what does that entail? So there's lots of mosquitoes in Central Florida and, and across the world actually and not all of them actually bite humans and so we're really focused on disease control and nuisance control is secondary. So uh, between 30 and 40 species in Central Florida and we're focusing on about a dozen of those. Mm. And mm. Uh, you know our inspectors go out every day and look for uh, areas of, of water where mosquitoes can develop and we treat those areas with in different sorts of insecticides to uh, take care of them in their larval form. Mm -hmm. So you treat the areas that are the, the stagnant waters. Right. Um, but we tend to all think about the truck that goes by mm -hmm. with all that, you know, wonderful stuff running right. out. And right. you run inside real quick. <laughs> right. So uh, uh, they go all throughout Orange County? Or th all throughout Orange County. And thankfully, we've got partners in all of the counties in Central Florida. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're a very close community, and, and we help each other out. So, yeah, mosquito control is, has lots of different um, focuses. We actually have our biggest focus uh, uh, doing larval control. And like you said, uh, uh, truck spraying is very, very uh, visual. You know, people mm -hmm. can see that, but it's actually the smallest part of our program. We is really right? focus more on the larval control versus the adult control. Wow, I never would have guessed that mm -hmm. because what I see is the truck coming by right. with its, yep. you know. Yep. Um, I, I, now, you said there's 30 or so different varieties of mosquitoes. Um, I commonly call one particular one a blind mosquito. They don't bite. Is that correct? Right, and they're actually not mosquitoes at all. Oh. Uh, they are a, f a midge, uh, and a completely different family. And you're right, they uh, they don't bite. They don't transmit disease, and and so that's not something that we're really focused on. Yeah, it's it's so amazing. I live on a lake here in the Apopka area, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, so every now and then we'll have this outbreak of blind mosquitoes right. and they're all over and you think, oh my goodness, and they do nothing. They do nothing. So um, interesting. So um, there's been a lot of talk recently about mosquitoes because every now and then there's a mosquito-borne uh, disease or yes. virus that's coming down the way and we have this uh, little one we're hearing about called the Zika virus. Right. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about that related sure. to what you all do? Sure. So the, there's two mosquitoes that are associated with transmitting Zika virus, as well as dengue fever and chikungunya. And these mosquitoes are special because they breed in artificial containers, um, not in swamps, not in ditches, oh. not in not in natural wetlands. So, you know, if there's a cup of water, uh, you know, uh, outside uh, around your house, a bird bath, a tarp. Um, a waste tire, you know, something like that, an artificial container, that's where these mosquitoes are, are developing wow. in. So that's why it's so important to get the message out for people to jump out the water. Mm. Um, that is the best way to control these mosquitoes. Um, and because it's very difficult for mosquito control folks to go door to door 
searching for, for teeny little containers of water. It's, it's, we really need everybody, every homeowner, to go out and look around and make sure they don't have any standing water. Wow. See, I would have never known that. Right. I, I thought it was the, you know, just our natural wet environment right. that, that you were concerned. But since there's two particular mosquitoes that yes. are carrying this, and that's where they choose to breed, I, right. I can see where that would be important. Yes. Uh, now I understand a little bit more. Exactly. Uh, I didn't quite understand that as much. So um, how do they actually transmit disease? How, how sure. does that work with a mosquito? So um, a mosquito doesn't automatically have the virus. Um, they, it, they have to actually bite somebody that has active virus in their system. And it's really interesting. The virus actually moves from the, from the gut, from the stomach of the female mosquito, uh, the virus moves into the salivary gland, so that takes a couple of days. So then it flies to another person to get another blood meal, and as it's biting the next person, it injects some saliva, mm -hmm. and that's how the virus gets from one person to the next. Mm -hmm. So from our uh, understanding, I guess we have lots of visitors from uh, nations that perhaps have a more active uh, situation there, right. and they are here. Um, I guess our concern isn't so much on transmitting person to person. Correct. But uh, instead, maybe our mosquito might bite that person? That's correct, that's okay. correct. So somebody comes from another area that may uh, be sick, and uh, some of our mosquitoes are, are you know, subjected to, to that person, you know, bite that person, and then a couple days later, bite somebody else, and that's how the local transmission cycle starts. Mm -hmm. Have we had much of that yet? We've had none of that. Okay. None of that. None, none with Zika virus uh, so far. Everything that's been reported in Florida has been travel associated. Mm -hmm. Now, does your, you work specifically in Orange County? Yep, we, uh, Orange County Mosquito Control covers Orange County. So we have uh, 67 counties. That's right. And um, I guess you're in con uh, contact with your compadres in other oh, absolutely. areas? Absolutely, absolutely. The good thing about Florida Mosquito Control is that we're a very tight family. And when I need help with something or need some information uh, about something or a piece of equipment, I know I can call any of my counterparts in other counties to get that assistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, tell us a little bit more. You said uh, the trucks we see throwing out all their little fumes um, are a small part of what you do. Yes. Uh, what does the day-to-day -day activity look like for the large part that you do? Right. So. Um, Every day, uh, our field inspectors get uh, a list of areas that they would like to uh, cover, uh, that we need them to cover, and they go out and they, they're checking wetlands, they're knocking on, on doors, asking permission to look around uh, for standing water, and we will either remove the water by dumping it out if it's an artificial container, or we'll put a larvicide in the water to control the larva. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we get lots of calls from residents every day, hey, the mosquitoes are really bad in my area, can you come and take a look? Certainly, that's something, that's a service we provide. We, we, we come out, uh, take a look in their yards, and unfortunately, often, more often than not, we actually find breeding sources of mosquitoes in their actual yards. Mm. Um, and so we, we, it's, it's public education. We get, have the opportunity to then to teach people what to look for, what mosquito larvae look like, and uh, how they can help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we also go door to door in that neighborhood and, and spread the word to the neighbors as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, since you said a lot of it is uh, public education, um, what is, do you have a website that people could go to for information? Yes, you can just go to the Orange County website uh, and do the, it's easiest if you do the keyword search of mosquito. Okay, okay. <laughs> Orange County, Florida, because there is an Orange County, California. Yes. Orange County, Florida, Florida, mosquito, and that's all you need to yeah. put in. Yeah, And yeah. we'll find you. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so that, that way they'll pick up some new ideas on, on what yep. to do. And, and um, so a lot of it happens to be in their... Um, uh, either their own yard or perhaps their neighbor's yard. Correct. And, and um, so there are not large breeding areas that we might think about in reference to lakes or swamps that you're primarily concerned about. For, for In relation to Zika virus and dengue fever and chikungunya, Right, we're focused on, on neighborhood type habitats. Uh, for, for the other mosquitoes that we have in the area, yes, we, we definitely focus on larger bodies of water, mm -hmm. uh, swamps, wetlands, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what can a uh, uh, Joe and Sally Common resident, mm -hmm. what can they do for their own protection as well as the protection of little Jimmy and Sally? What, right. what, what can they do? 
Right. Um, I know it's unpopular, but if you could wear long sleeves and long pants, it's mm -hmm. very difficult when it's so warm here. Um, avoid peak mosquito times uh, for uh, the, you know, the majority of uh, mosquitoes that we have here. And wear repellent. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really, really want people to wear repellent. There's lots of different kinds out there. Um, the CDC has a list of recommended types of repellents. DEET is the gold standard. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one more thing about these mosquitoes re uh, related to Zika and dengue and chikungunya is that they're actually more active during the daytime. So if you have mosquitoes mm -hmm. in the middle of the day, uh, not, a, you know, not so much at dusk, but if you have mosquitoes in the middle of the day, that means that um, there's a container around that where they are coming from. Oh, okay. It's something special about these two species is that they're active daytime biters. Okay, that's good because you were talking about peak mosquito times and I was going to say, well, isn't that early morning and, Mostly. and, and late afternoon? For most evening? species, yeah. yes. Okay, but if you're seeing something in the day, that's your, that's your alert, ding, yes. ding, ding, something's yes. going on something's here. Something's going on in the neighborhood. To, really, really work on that. Yes. Well, we have about a minute, a uh, minute and a half yet uh, left to go. Um, you had mentioned that the person could actually use uh, mosquito repellent on them and, and their children, and, yes. and that's something that they should do yes. along with their, their clothing, their, that's the right. attire that's they're, right. that they're doing. Um, what do you uh, do uh, that, um, you know, perhaps you, you said right now we don't have any issues that are locally based right. or as far as mm -hmm. local residents, but more travel people. Um, are there things we need to do uh, when we go to the parks? So I think it's still important to um, wear repellent. Um, you know, the parks, they all have their own pest control as well. So mm -hmm. they're taking care of that. They're, they're heavily landscaped. There's not a lot of containers around for these specific mosquitoes mm -hmm. to develop in. And so I don't think it's much of a problem in, in those areas. But again, you know, just wear repellent and mm -hmm. be smart about it. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been very educational. Thank mm -hmm. you for coming and uh, sharing with us some of the uh, insights that you've been able to give us for our residents. Mosquito control is very important to us it here, is. and it's not just from a nuisance standpoint is what I'm hearing you say, but literally for a protection that uh, for you and your family due to some of these uh, um, nasty little transmission. So right. uh, it's one thing to be annoyed by the bite. It's a whole other thing where mm. you might have That's right. the disease. Thank you so much, Kelly, for coming and being with us in this first segment. And uh, we're going to break for a public service announcement, and we'll be right back. Mosquitoes will bite day and night, so protect yourself with these tips. Keep mosquitoes outside by shutting doors and covering windows with screens. Use EPA-approved insect repellents anytime you're outdoors. Cover your skin with long sleeves and pants. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in water. Just a bottle cap of water is all they need. So drain, refresh, or cover anything around buildings that can hold water at least weekly and put away outside items that aren't being used. A message from the Florida Department of Health. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you could be with us uh, today. We are on our Joy in Our Town segment, which is our community service segment. And today we have our guest, Kelly Deutsch, who's uh, with us again. And she's talking to us about a very important thing in our community that involves mosquito control, something that we have so much going on right now in the news. And uh, so we welcome you back again uh, to talk with us. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that uh, we wanted to chat a little bit about in the last segment, we talk about the Zika virus, which is in the news big time, mm -hmm. but uh, is the concept of sentinel chickens. What is a sentinel right. chicken? So uh, besides dengue and chikungunya and Zika virus, there are other mosquito-borne illnesses that we are concerned about, and that uh, includes West Nile virus, St. Louis encephalitis, and Eastern equine encephalitis. And we use sentinel chickens um, as indicator species for these uh, viruses. So every single week we take blood samples from different flocks of chickens that we have around the county. We actually have 12 flocks of chickens around the county. And uh, we take blood samples from them and send it to the Department of Health for analysis. And um, we can tell if there's virus activity in the area based on the results of those tests. Wow. 
That is incredible. So um, what's special? I mean, are, I assume these 12 flocks of chickens mm -hmm. are around mm -hmm. geographically yep. in different areas? Spread around evenly throughout the county, so we have, a good, so we have good coverage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, these chickens, um, once they test positive for a virus, we actually remove it from the flock because it can't be used any further. Mm -hmm. And um, we give it a new home. They're not killed or anything, and, mm -hmm. the, and the birds do not die from these viruses. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we replace that with another bird. So c continuously throughout the year, we're testing for these other types of viruses. Mm -hmm. So a lot of science going on. You don't just wing it. So no. I just had to say that. <laughs> just had to throw that in. So, um, so is there a difference of what you're finding, perhaps, in the rural areas of Orange County versus the, um, the urban areas? Um, no, no, not so much, um, because the mosquitoes that have the ability to spread these other viruses are kind of evenly spread throughout the county. Okay, so it would be wrong for somebody to think, I live in downtown Orlando, I have nothing to worry about. Um, there's probably fewer mosquitoes overall right downtown, just because um, there's probably less water uh, mm -hmm. in general, but, um, you know, there, the, you, you, if you're outside, there, and there's still mosquitoes mm -hmm. out, unfortunately. Do you have any of these sentinels in downtown? Um, not in downtown downtown, but at our facility, which is close to downtown, we do have chickens. Uh -huh. Any roosters? Well, sometimes this rooster sneaks in there, and unfortunately, they have to be rehomed as well because... Um, nobody red, wants a rooster right nobody, by their house? No, they don't. Unfortunately, they're too noisy. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, uh, um, the whole idea that roosters crow um, first thing in the morning, that's a myth. It is a myth. They, they crow whenever they want to crow. Day. That's right. Yeah. So, um, so it, are there specific, when you say you take the blood samples from these sentinel chickens, from these indicator chickens of what's yeah. going on, um, in these samples you check for all the appropriate diseases? That's primarily what you're looking mm -hmm. for is diseases? Yes, yes. We're looking for West Nile virus, Eastern equine encephalitis, and uh, St. Louis encephalitis. And, um, the reason that we're not looking for the other viruses like Zika or dengue or chikungunya is because um, those viruses don't include birds in their life cycle. Um, West Nile and, 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 the other, and those viruses um, are actually bird viruses that humans sometimes get. Ah. Yes. So, so the birds don't help us with the Zika. No. Nope. Ah. Nope. Nope. They're not indicators for Zika. Zika is exclusively human and mosquito cycle. Do we have any other um, thing that uh, um, um, one of the uh, couple particular types of species of, uh, of mosquitoes bite that are Zika carriers? I mean, do they bite rats? Do they bite just people? What's the deal? The ones associated with Zika only like humans. They're picky eaters. I guess they are. Picky well, eaters. that's uh, <laughs> unfortunate for yes, us. Yes. Fortunate exactly. for all our little dogs and cats and, right. and whatever, but right. uh, not so much uh, there. So, do we have any incidences that um, that we've been able to find in the last year or so as a result of our chicken sentinels? So we do uh, occasionally have positive chickens for West Nile virus and, um, and Eastern equine encephalitis. We haven't had St. Louis in, in quite some time, but. Uh, we do, we do occasionally get positives of that, um, and then we do extra treatments around those areas to limit the uh, risk to humans uh, for the transmission of those viruses. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, chickens, um, chickens are a, a good resource for us. They're just one of the ways that we do surveillance for these uh, mosquito-borne illnesses. Um, we actually set out different types of traps that are baited with dry ice uh, to mimic uh, carbon dioxide like we breathe mm -hmm. uh, and they're attracted to that we catch them in a in a collection net and we can send those mosquitoes the actual mosquito itself off for testing as well so mm. we've got lots of different tools in our tool belt to do surveillance for different mosquito borne illnesses mm -hmm. the uh, chicken uh, sentinels <laughs> or the chicken indicators are the prime one though perhaps that you're using for some of these uh Yes, yes, and um, not every uh, mosquito control program actually uses chickens. They're just one way to, to do um, surveillance. Um, there's unfortunately some uh, wild birds that are more uh, susceptible to West Nile virus, uh, crows, blue jays, um, I think ravens as well. Um, and so there's some other groups that actually collect the dead birds and send the birds in for uh, surveillance as well. So 
Um, lots of different ways to do it, and this is the one that we uh, chose to do. Mm -hmm. What, uh, um, you know, we, we hear so much in the news about the Zika virus, um, and, and right now um, that's been closely watched, and yep. I think all the, the incidences we've heard about in the United States and certainly even Florida are from travelers coming in who already have it. Um, but here in Orange County, what are the main types of diseases or viruses that you are concerned about in reference to um, uh, the mosquitoes? Not because the national news is saying it, but because you seem to see the most cases. Sure. So um, it kind of actually fl fluctuates. Uh, in, in the past, we've had lots of activity, uh, West Nile virus uh, activity. And last year, we actually didn't have quite a bit, at least not in Orange County. Um, but you know, I think that dengue and chikungunya are, are more um, difficult diseases, illnesses to get through versus Zika virus, but yet Zika virus has a special um, concern because it affects pregnant women and uh, developing babies. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's hard for me to say which one is, is, is worse than the other. You know, they, they all have their, their special groups that should be concerned about them. Mm -hmm. Chicken gunya, did Chicken you say? Chicken That sounds like something I get to eat or I something know. like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, boy, that's an that's a interesting uh, name. Why do they throw the name chicken in there? Is it effect? Uh... It, it, it's not spelled quite the same. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a name and a word in another language, and it, okay. it means... And uh, we pronounce it chicken. Chicken gunya. Yeah, well, that's definitely <laughs> something that sounds like we eat, but uh, right. at any rate... Well, there are many things that you do um, for the ones I think that you had mentioned in our last segment, um, two specific ones that uh, carry the Zika virus. Um, and that is you primarily go after um, standing water. Yes. Um, are there any that we should be concerned about that come from the natural, mm -hmm. humid environment that mm -hmm. we live in? Yes, so there's a number of species uh, that are associated with Nile virus and Eastern Equine Encephalitis and St. Louis Encephalitis. Those come from our natural bodies of water. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, it's, it's difficult to put all of our focus into one area of control, one area of disease activity. Um, I don't want to take away from my efforts working on, on West Nile virus because of Zika virus. It's, it's, we have to do it all. Um, so thankfully, I was able to hire extra people to help with the response to Zika virus. But yes, mm -hmm. there are uh, mosquitoes that we are concerned about that come out of natural areas as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you are the, the acting manager of this yes. department. And um, so you have to kind of figure out where to put your resources right. and, and what have you. Um, tell us about some of the equipment, <coughs> specialized equipment that you mm -hmm. might use. It's uh, be interesting to us. Sure. So uh, in surveillance, there's lots of different types of traps we use. Uh, mosquitoes are really funny little creatures. Some mosquitoes like one habitat or one certain kind of trap versus another. So we have to put um, lots of different traps out in the same area to collect different species of mosquitoes to get an overall picture. Um, so we do a lot of trapping. We have lots of specialty traps that we use out there. And then as far as treatment goes, we've got a list of um, uh, materials that we have available to us for the same reasons. Some mosquitoes respond better to some treatments versus others. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, dirty water uh, is different. We treat dirty water and gross water differently than we would treat fresh rainwater. Um, it's 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 a, a, you know, a, a call that they have to make in the field uh, to determine what they're going to use. But, um, we, so we've got lots of different materials. And then as far as uh, spray equipment, we've got handheld foggers, we've got truck mounted fogging equipment, thermal foggers, just lots of different types of, of spray equipment. And again, it depends on the area that they're treating uh, that they'll choose the right equipment for that. Now, um, many people can go to the store um, yes. and they can get a little fogger yes. and they can do their thing. Uh, is that effective? Certainly is. Um, we at, uh, at the county, we don't have like the special mix, the secret mix, the secret ingredient. We actually use the same materials that are available at the big box stores. Um, the difference is we buy them in very large big amounts. Big boxes. In big boxes and very large <laughs> amounts in drums and in barrels and in very large containers. And we've got commercial spray equipment. Right. So it's the same 
Same, same stuff. Same stuff. So we just buy has, more of it and, and put out more of it. So, so you tend to think that you fog an area, and as soon as you fog it, it's only going to last a little bit. But that's, that's right. That's not true, or it is true. That is true. Okay. That is true. With with the spray, it's um, it's it's so a one-time kill. It's a before and out event. Uh, okay, it's a one-time <clears throat> kill. Okay. Yes. All right. So now I have to ask you the big questions. Okay. So. You, you, I, I have two particular grandsons from the same mom and dad. Okay. And one gets tons of bites going yeah. outside. The other one doesn't. So the big question is blood type. Does it matter? I have no idea. Nobody has any idea, oh, unfortunately. We, we, we laugh about it on these grandsons because yeah. one of them, if there's a mosquito, he's going to attract it. Yeah. And the other one is like, are there mosquitoes out here? I mean, it's the craziest thing. It's the same with me and my husband. My husband is 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 a magnet for mosquitoes, and I just don't have the same. Well, they know that about you. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, yeah, the Wonder Woman of mosquitoes. That's right. So, uh, That's right. Okay, so there's nothing that you can tell our audience in reference to blood type does not seem to matter. There's um, there may be some. A uh, couple of studies about it, but nothing, nothing that's really widespread, you know, nothing known about that. So if it's not blood type, is there something else that our bodies give off? You mentioned mm -hmm. carbon dioxide. Yes. But beyond carbon dioxide that we're breathing a lot, um, is there anything else, mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. things? Lactic acid is another um, component of our skin. and. Um, uh, actually, some of our traps use components of, of human scent in, their, in the trap to attract mosquitoes to it. Mm -hmm. um, so lactic acid, carbon dioxide, those are like the two main, main components. Mm -hmm. So some people, um, you know, it could be part of diet, it could be pH, it could be blood type, it could be what they drank, you know, any, so many things. There's so many components to it, and I, there's not a really good answer for that one. Mm, mm, very, very interesting. Well, um, we only have uh, less than a minute mm -hmm. to go. Is there uh, anything else that jumps in your mind that perhaps you wish that uh, you could uh, talk to the people of Central Florida about? Right, so it's so important that everybody take a look around their properties, and not just once, after every time it rains, mm. you know, you could, you could dump out your, your bird bath uh, once, you know, refill it with fresh water and then forget about it. You know, I need you to redo that over and over and over again. Mm. Make sure that your pool toys are, are dumped out and put mm. away. Um, you know, if you've got other, other containers uh, in, in your yard, please make sure to dump them out, cover them. If you've got rain barrels that you want water in, make sure that you have a screen on it and cover it up. Mm -hmm. So just dump out the water every time it rains. Wow. Well, this has been very helpful, and thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing with us today, Kelly. It, it uh, has been a joy to have you and also uh, very informative. So we want to once again thank you, our viewer, for uh, tuning in to Joy in Our Town. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and is made possible by your telethon dollars. Your continual support can keep Joy in Our Town coming to your home every week. Write to Joy in Our Town, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.